Now, I've got a quick intro for you today. I've been out of town all week for work, actually covering some news at the Army Ammunition Plant in McAllister, Oklahoma. I did get to do a segment standing in front of a MOAB, or the GBU-43 Massive Ordnance Air Blast, commonly called the mother of all bombs. Okay, that's just a fun aside. Nothing to do with today's pattern. But today's fly is another really fun one. Probably the wackiest and most fun fly I've tied all year. Now, I got this one from David Klaus Meyer's 101 Favorite Nymphs and Wet Flies. It's called the Rubber Leg Copper John. Now, we've talked about the history of John Barr's most famous pattern before, so I'm not going to go into that here. I'm just going to show you how to tie this version. And one more note, how it's tied here, I consider this a straight up attractor pattern. But it can be a true multi-species fly. Leave the legs long like I'm about to show you, and it's a great panfish or smallmouth nymph, or cut them just a little bit shorter and you've got a great trout fly. But either way, it's a really cool looking bug and certainly a fun one to tie. So there it is in the vise, a rubber leg copper john. Now this really is probably the wackiest looking fly I've tied all year, but stick with me, this thing is a lot of fun. Now he calls for a, I think a, a curve shank. Um, let's see, what did he call this one? A larva hook, which I, don't have anything called a larva hook, so this is a curve shank caddis pupa hook, which looks curved enough to me. And we do put a bead on it, like most all copper johns, and I'm going with a fluorescent orange. This is actually a tungsten. I'm not sure what size, but just pick a size to match your hook. This one says it's 7 64ths of an inch, which I'm not really sure what that is, maybe a 2.4 millimeter or so. Use some black thread, catch it in, take it around to the toward the back, and let's tie in some goose bias. Now this is about the only tricky part of any copper john, getting them splayed out, convex sides together. So I'm just gonna lay it on there, try to, you know, get your length right. And if you cheat a little bit, cheat toward your side, because this first wrap might spin them around just a little bit. So let's see, couple wraps, and that's gonna be fine right there. I do need to go a little bit farther back though. Okay, that's going to work. I can either snip or just bury these right here. And you'll note I did not put any extra weight to hold that bead in. We've got a lot going on up front that'll hold it here in just a minute. Now for the wire body, tons of options here. I'm going to go with a medium, just plain copper. I'm going to catch it in a little bit behind the, the bead right there. And just wrap it all the way back to where I'm going to start it wrapping it. Oh, and I just nicked my thread right there. If that ever happens to you, and I'm sure it probably does, what you can do, just cut it off and start over, or just spend a few extra thread wraps and, you know, try to work through it. And did we work through it enough? Yeah, maybe. I'm going to have a little bit to clean up in the back right there, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and leave my thread up there to where I want to stop wrapping this body and go ahead and wrap these up, touch and turns, one right in front of the other, and try not to get any, leave any black show in between the wraps, but if you do, not a big deal, just keep going. Okay, now here's a tip, when you're using some really thick wire like this, just catch it in, couple of turns, a couple of thread wraps right there. Now bring it forward and just try to catch it in, flatten it out right here. And if you do that, now we can spin this without worrying about it unraveling on us. See that? Just be careful you didn't leave a sharp nub right there. I don't think I did. I think we should be fine. So go ahead and take your thread back to the front of this body here. And we're going to catch in some flat tinsel, you know, a pearlescent or a mirage or something that's going to be our, our wing case. So let's just catch this one in right here. Try to keep it on top. Pull it back a little bit. I think we're going to be fine right there. That's close enough to being on top. Now leave your thread, oh, about right in the middle of that body, and let's catch in some legs. 
And again, all kinds of options here. I'm gonna go with a pumpkin, barred pumpkin right here. Just fold it over and then catch it in with a couple of wraps right on top, a couple of loose wraps. Oh, I'm just mangling my thread with the point of that hook. But with a couple of loose wraps, then you can position this off to the sides, maybe a little bit underneath. I think that's gonna be fine right there. Now, a couple of more, couple more tight wraps right here. And there we go. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, oh, I should probably start my thread back behind these legs right here. Put some wax on it. Now we're gonna dub this thorax. And this is a diamond bright, but any kind of synthetic ice dub type stuff right here. And it's not gonna take a lot, but it really does make this fly kind of cool. And, you know, certainly adds a, an element of uniqueness to it. So maybe a two inch noodle or so, just enough to, to dub this thorax right here. And don't worry if it's crazy buggy, we can always trim it, but I'm gonna put a wrap behind that. Then, maybe a wrap or two in the middle, and then a wrap up front. And there we go, that's our thorax. Now, next thing we do, let's just fold this over. Probably need to cut this right here first, so this legs won't get in our way to fold this wing case over. So just kind of pull these back and put a couple of wraps right here to lock this in behind the bead. Okay, that's gonna be just fine. And we're not done, we've got one more component. Klaus Meyer calls for just some kind of hen, small hen feather right here. And I'm gonna go with the brown, I think we'll work with this color scheme. Now this part can be a little bit tricky. We're not gonna put a lot of wraps on it, but you just wanna catch it in right behind the bead, right in front of these legs. So a couple wraps right there, maybe fold it back over and really lock it in. Now we've got this big stub right here to contend with. And I am gonna use my hackle pliers. I'm only gonna put maybe two wraps around this right here. Just kind of maneuver these legs so that you're getting this, this hen right in front of them. That's two wraps right there. Let's go ahead and catch this off. And I don't want to really push these legs back, so just try to be careful that you, you don't push them back too much. I think that's gonna be fine right there. Now just a couple extra wraps and we whip finish right behind the, the bead. And there we go, really a crazy looking rubber leg copper john. Now, if you were fishing this for trout, I would probably would trim those legs a good bit shorter. But if you're gonna put this in a bluegill panfish box, I'd fish it just like it is right there. And I think it's a pretty cool looking, pretty fun pattern. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.